Hello, my name is Lulu and I am doing my end of the semester reflection for my IDST 50 class at City College of San Francisco with Dr. Biel Rasa. I am so sorry, I'm kind of nervous, but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started with um, doing the reflection component of the Identity Compass project. And so part of the Identity Compass project's reflection is to do essentially like a, a reflection of the end of the semester based on the assignments and other aspects of the class. And so let's get started. Start off with the first question. So first question is, how have you grown from the person you first presented in your vision board? When I look back at my vision board, I see aspects of my vision board of either like my physical activity, I see um, my community, I see my ethnicities, and I see other aspects of like my every, everyday daily life where it highlights a little bit about myself. Um, it does highlight a little bit of my goals like as an educator, etc. And so some aspects where I've grown from my vision board, I think I've grown to be very mindful about my health and wellness and I've accepted my level of physical activity. I've developed some new habits, um, healthy habits. And so in that aspect of my personal life, I feel like I'm doing really great. When I'm looking at the vision board in re relation to my goals, uh, and uh, maybe my career goals. I feel like it's still a work in progress. A matter of three months, a couple months, I did make some strides of looking and identifying some potential next steps. Actually, I would have say like completing the research aspect of like my future goals and places I wanna either further my career experience or even um, even starting that next step of finding um, new opportunities. So uh, I think that component, I feel like I have grown from. So would I say I met my short and long-term goals? Yes and no. What new skit? so going on to the second question is, what new study skills and habits, including time management and in ways to address procrastination, have you cultivated since your educational journey narrative? I will say time management, study skills, everyday habits, uh, procrastination. I think that's just a lifelong effort of working on. I feel like there's aspects during the semester where I was able to identify when were my limits. I think there was a lot of series of an unfortunate events that occurred. <laughs> if you under, if you know the book, then you'll know. Okay, um, there was some a lot of a series of unfortunate events that occurred that I feel like were out of my control, such as um, having four deaths in my in my life. Uh, balancing full-time work, full-time school, and being able to be be present in academics. Uh, I think that I was able to develop and even more have more practice of addressing my limits and um, communicating. Uh, and so that I think is a part of the educational journey is when, in you, when you, we can take the time to reflect and when we've reached our max, um, when we are, um, our energy levels have gone down, when we are um, trying to think of the word when your energy levels are low. But anywho, I was able to kind of 
I was able to outreach to my professor and let them know like what was going on and communicating. And so um, I think this cultivation of ongoing communication, ongoing working efforts to improve on my um, time management, procrastination and study skills will always be lifelong habits that I need to continue developing. Um, but I've made strides and demonstrated ways during the semester where I've communicated in times where um, my energy levels were not, or I wasn't able to be at my best self. Yeah. Next question is, what healthy habits you identified in your wellness plan have you been able to practice and cultivate? How have Next question is, what healthy habits you identified in your wellness plan have you been able to practice and cultivate? How has that helped you find a greater sense of control and balance over your life? One area in what I identify in my wellness plan as uh, social is uh, being able to be part of an online book club. So I recently joined uh, uh, online book club. It's a nice community of Pacific Islander folks reading Pacific Islander um, literature. And it was really great, awesome. Um, I've been able to read maybe about the three, four books. Did I really read a lot of the books? There's like one book I totally did not open, but there was a few poetry books. So I really like found a gravitation towards poetry. What's really cool is I've cultivated a community of online book interest people from all literally around the world. So every Tuesday evening, that's like my go-to space. Um, a lot of the times we do a lot of community check-ins and talking about things that are important within the Pacific Islander community. And I really have enjoyed that space. It's been a space of, um, we call it Talanoa or Talanoa, which is like just sharing stories. We do a lot of that. Um, we have, I've been able to enhance and really work on that social aspect of my wellness plan because with the whole COVID pandemic, um, as you can assume, as an extroverted person, not being able to see people, I always, I, I, I have this yearning to connect with people. So that helps fill in the gaps when uh, I need to connect with folks. Um, and luckily through Zoom, FaceTime, social media, I've been able to make that happen. The operative assignments completing the FAFSA, making an appointment with your counselor and ed plan were designed to help you have a greater sense of how to navigate the system. The operative assignments completing the FAFSA, making an appointment with your counselor and ed plan were designed to help you have a greater sense of how to navigate the system, structures of higher education, as well as assert greater ownership over your path in higher education. Do you feel you have been successful in completing this processes? Why or why not? What are workarounds that you plan to implement, implement to better your nav navigate these systems. So I was able to complete meeting with a counselor, creating an education plan. My education plan is only a year long, so I won't be completing financial aid, um, the FAFSA or the California Dream Act. And so one of the things that I have um, been able to really uh, re-educate and re-ground myself in is being able to put on that uh, hat of being a student and it's been a, a doozy um what's really fascinating is this thought of like wow why was I going to I have always been a student who worked and went to school um I have been a student who always worked like 30 to 40 hours and went to school so I think about it, I'm like wow there is reasons why counselors tell students not to work and go to school at the same time because it it drains you it exhausts you it um it it really um it really puts you in a place of not having that energy to really put committed dedicated time into something and therefore so when I was going throughout the semester I felt like I was at my lowest honestly and being able to communicate um being able to do office hours with professors, being able to email my professors and let them know what was going on allowed me to have that ownership of my education 
to be able to advocate for myself, to be able to remind myself, Lulu, like take time, right? Slow down. And instead of being this go-getter, like speed racer person, trying to think I can do everything and anything and be Wonder Woman, I realized that it's okay for us to take breaks. It's okay for us to, to not be our 100% self, but it's always important to be mindful where we're at um, as individuals, as human beings, because if we're not doing well outside the classroom, how are we supposed to be well in the classroom? And so overall, my hope in the spring semester is to perform, um, taking away, perform better by taking away some of the things I could have done better this fall semester. Um, and my hope is that I'm able to uh, finish off my year at City College strong and hopefully earn these certificates at the end of the year. But with that, thank you so much for watching. I want to just make a major shout out to Dr. Villarasa for really just being that go-to professor who's been just so understanding, caring, and really has been such a great, great role model to so many students. I believe if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have found this uh, yearning to continue on my career goals of hopefully, hopefully one day being a professor in a, in a, or a professor or an instructor at a college. Um, I feel like this class really helped me reground myself, re recommit myself, and even more so remind myself of what it means to be a college student. And I feel like at the end of the day, whether I'm in a classroom or not, I'll always be a lifelong learner. And so with that being said, thank you so much for watching again. I hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, 